again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you how to crochet a pretty darn spiffy and easy basket weave hat. Yes. Now, it may seem a little bit out of season considering this is spring. However, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm chilly these days. In some places, actually, it's still snowing. My gosh. Well, that being said, these are pretty darn easy to make, pretty darn quick, and I've been making quite a few of these, actually. These as well as some others, because, you know, they don't take up a tremendous amount of yarn. They're really quick, pretty easy. Actually, I did another one right here. Very bright. <laughs> um, the, the camera's not doing it justice. Um, both of these, actually, are in Red Heart Super Saver. This one is in Carrot. And I believe this one is in, I want to say, Country Blue, if I'm not mistaken. I don't have the, the wrapper to it anymore. Um, like I said, very, very easy. And what I really like about this design is that the pattern goes all the way up to the very, very top of the crown, as opposed to working your increases and then finally getting to the basket weave pattern. So the basket weave is throughout, which I really like, and it also has a nice little ribbed edging for the brim. Now, I would suggest using a, a typical worsted weight yarn. Um, as far as hooks, well, I personally used a size J, six millimeter hook, as well as, now this is for the top of the crown to the body. As far as the brim, you want a slightly smaller hook so that the, the brim will be a little bit tighter. Now, what I did was, after using the J for the body, for the brim, I used a size H, a five millimeter hook. You can, of course, experiment with different yarns, different hook sizes. You know, everybody's tension is different. So I would say, you know what, experiment, you know, have some fun and experiment, think outside of the box and try and see what works best for you. Now, I would also recommend perhaps using a solid color. In another piece that I did, I used a variegated yarn and the result was mm, a mixed bag. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so this, this actually I uh, used, this was Red Heart Unforgettable, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I love the colorway of the yarn. I love the earth tones and the, the greens and the rusts. However, it is a little bit busy, and you kind of lose the basket weave texture in the busyness of the pattern. So just to actually show you, yeah, if you're going to use a variegated yarn, you very well may end up with something like this. It might be your style, it might not. But this is one of the reasons why I do often say, you know, what kind of colorway would probably work better for this particular project. So it's fun, it's funky, but it may not be the look you're going for. So you might want to use a solid color so that you can really see the actual patterning. All right, that being said, for today's tutorial, I'm going to use a different yarn altogether. This is Pound of Love, and it's sort of a, a denim blue. Got quite a bit of it here. Should be able to make definitely more than one hat. And I'm going to use the same size hooks for this as well. It runs a little bit on the thin side as far as a weight of four, but it's still a weight of four, just like the Unforgettable. Well, without further ado, Let's get started. Round one. All right. So, like I said, for the top of the crown and through the body, I'm going to use a size J, six millimeter hook. And I've got my yarn here, so let's get started. All right. So, first things first, we need, of course, a slip knot. Now, as far as different techniques. Some people like the magic ring. Me, personally, I like to just work within this first chain. That's me personally. So we're going to chain up four. The first chain is what we're going to work into. The remaining three chains, that's going to act as our first double crochet. 
and we need a total of nine double crochets. So this acts as one, and then going into this first chain with the next eight double crochets for a total of nine. So we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And of course, I always like to double check, just personal paranoia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then into that very last double crochet, be sure to go into that third chain from the bottom. We're going to do a slip stitch right in there underneath both loops of the V and slip stitch to join. And that is our first round. And of course, you can always pull the, the tail to cinch it up nice and neat. You can sew in the ends later. No biggie. And that is round one. Round two. Okay, so again, this is personal preference. What I like to do is I like to chain up two to get the height. However, I don't count that as an actual stitch. So what we're going to do is around every post, nine total, we are going to do a front post double crochet and in between the stitches, in between the posts, we're going to create an additional stitch. Okay. So first things first, after chaining up two, go around the post for a front post double crochet, and then in between do a regular double crochet. And that will give us a total of 18 stitches by the end of the round. So we've got one, two, another front post for three, in between the posts for four, front post for five, in between for six, and it's going to start us right in on our texture. So I'm just going to keep on going with a front post and then one in between the stitches for every stitch all the way around. And then of course at the end, you know me, I like to double check because quite frankly, it's a lot easier to fix mistakes initially than having to rip out your work later, which is very frustrating. <laughs> All right, and I think I need to do this last one if I'm not mistaken, but that's why I was double count. Okay, like so. So let's double count and then we will slip stitch to join. So we've got one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Perfect. Okay, so as far as joining, now we're going to join into the top of the stitch where we did the front post. This chaining of two, we are going to leave alone. We're just going to go right into the top of that front post, double crochet, and slip stitch to finish round two. Alrighty. Round three. Okay, so again, chain up two. Now, this front post we need to increase it. We're going to be increasing the 
the highs and the lows, you know, the, the ridges and the valleys, if you will, alternatively as we keep going. So for now, we're going to focus on the front post double crochets for this round. So for every front post double crochet, we're going to do two front post double crochets in each. So going around for a front post, and then front post around the same front post, and then the stitch that we did in between the stitches last round, we're going to do a back post. So yarning over, going in through the back, around the post. Sometimes it helps if you turn your work, actually, and then grabbing your yarn and pulling it through. Pull through two, pull through two, and it creates a ridge around the front. So now technically we have three stitches. So again, two front posts around the front post. So one and two around that front post and then a back post. So coming in around the back, I know it can be a little bit weird and fiddly to actually see what it is that I'm doing, but we're just working around the post of that stitch and then pulling the yarn through for our back post double crochet. And then two front posts around that front post. And then a back post. And then two front posts. And then a back. And it's a little bit easier when you have a pre-existing row to work off of, but you gotta start from somewhere. Two front posts. And a back post. And two fronts. and a back, and two fronts, and a back, and we're almost there. Two fronts, And a back, two fronts, and a back. There we go. And as you can see, we have come full circle, and this is our chaining of two, which we are going to ignore. We're just going to go and do a slip stitch into the top of this first front post double crochet. And there you go. That's round three. Round four. Now we're going to treat the front post double crochets just normally, and it's the back post that we're now going to be increasing. So first things first, chain up two, and then for each front post, just do a front post. And yes, it can be a little bit fiddly because they are right next to each other. They're scooched right next to each other, but it is worth it, trust me. So front post around the front post, two times, one in each. sort of branches out. Then the back post, and I know this is a little bit tricky, but it's worth it. I'm going to do two back posts around the back post. So we've got one, 
And then what I like to do is I like to go in through in between here and down around that back post and then finish your back post double crochet like that. I'm going to do a couple of these. So front post, front post, front post, front post, and then two back posts around the next back post. So the first one's a little bit easier. The second one, it's like trying to sort of finagle your way in there. So again, after doing your first back post, go in in between. Like so. Just got to show it who's boss. And then two front posts. One in each. And then two back posts. Okay, got stuck there, but that's okay. Back post and back post, two front posts, and two back posts. Alrighty, so I'm going to keep doing this for the rest of the round, and I will meet back up with you when we're ready to finish the round. Alright, so I'm almost done with round four. Let's see, I've got my two front posts and then that back post right there where we have to do the increase, so I'm going to show you that. And so, of course, front post, front post, and then two back posts, back and back, and then again, we are going to dismiss this chaining up of two and into that first front post double crochet do a slip stitch right in the top there like so coming along nicely all right let's move on round five okay so now we have to increase the front posts again Again, like I said, it's going back and forth, back and forth between the, the highs and the lows, if you will. It's kind of manic, if you will. So chaining up two, and then around the first front post, two front post double crochets. So one, and around that same post, two. So that's the increase then a regular front post double crochet around the next front post and then for the back posts one back post double crochet in each no increase so one and then two So we've got our increase, a regular, and then two regulars. So again, into the first front post, two front post double crochets, and then a regular front post, and then in the back posts, a back post in each. Almost had it. There we are. 
and then increase the first front post with two front posts in that same stitch. A regular front post. And then a back post for each of the next two back posts. And keep on keeping on and do this same sequence of stitches all the way around. And then as per usual, when you get to the end, when you have this, I mean, this is where we started. So it'll be two front posts, a regular front post, and then two back posts, one in each, and then slip stitch to the top of that first front post double crochet. And I will meet back up with you for the next round. All right, round six. This is actually where we're going to change things up a little bit because if we want a basket weave pattern, well, we need to invert what we've been doing. So we're going to be changing the front posts to back posts and the back posts to front posts. It's a lot simpler than you think. So again, starting off, chain up two, and then we have three front posts here, and we're going to turn those into back posts. And then for the back posts, we're going to do our increase. Again, we did our increase here. Well, we need to do our increase here while also changing them over. It's easier than you think not to worry. Of course, I'm going to walk you through it. So first things first, we need to do three back post double crochets. So scooting around that first one for our first back post, and then two more All right, so we've got our three back posts. Now we need a total of three front posts. So we need to increase this first stitch going around the post to make a front post, double crochet, and then another one. And then one regular front post around the next stitch. So as you can see, we are inverting what we already did. Okay, so next up, again, into the first front post, we need a back post. And then two more back posts. Okay, so we've got our three. Now we need three front posts. So increase the first one with two front posts. And then one more front post. Okay, then we need three back posts. Two and three, and then increase again two front posts around the next back post. I got one, two, and then another front post around that back post. All right, so what it amounts to is three back posts, three front posts, three back, three front, three back, three front, all the way around until you reach the end. And when we do, it would be again, three back posts into the front posts that we did, and then increase 
two front posts, another front post, and then slip stitch. Again, do not pay any attention to the man behind the curtain. Yes, ignore this chaining of two and slip stitch into the top of that first back post double crochet stitch right into there. Yes. And we will continue on with the next round. Okay. Okay. Round seven. Okay. So in the last round, it was the first bunch that we did, well, normal, and it was the second bunch that we increased. So again, we have to increase the first and leave the second bunch alone. So I'm going to start off by chaining up two, and we're going to do two back post double crochets into the first back post. And again, yes, I know this can be fiddly, but it's not a raise. Okay, so we're going in through the back, around the post, and doing a back post, double crochet. And again, what I like to do is I like to go in between, in between the back post and the chain. I like to go in between. This is just me personally. And then around the post and finish up your back post double crochet increase and then two more back post double crochets for a total of four back posts again and i can't stress this enough this chaining of two does not count. Basically, it acts as a filler, you know, so that it, there's no gaps in between here. Makes it a look a little bit cleaner, I think. All right, so then the next three front posts, well, one in each, no increase. So one, and if I can get in there, it's giving me trouble, but I'll give it trouble, haha. -ha. And then two and three and then again we need to increase the first back post and then again going in between around the post there you go and two more like so and then three front posts one two Three, and then increase the first back post going in between and down and around pull through and then two more And then three front posts. It can be a little bit tricky. I will be the first to admit to it, but I always think that the end result, if it's worth it, hey, it's worth it. And I think it's worth it. Hope you do too. All right. So continue on in this fashion with a total of four back post double crochets followed by three front post double crochets all the way around and then when you work your way to the end it will be four 
back post double crochets two in that first one because you need that increase still so it's two three four and then three front post double crochets and then into the first of that increase this one right here slip stitch into the top of that first back post double crochet and that will be the end of round seven round eight now this is actually going to be the last of the increase rounds although of course you can fiddle with the pattern by all means um, just keep in mind that if you want your basket weave to be you know even as far as the number of stitches are concerned what you would want to do is keep going on an increase evenly because right right now we have four back post double crochets and three front post. Well, the front posts, those are going to be the ones that we increase for this round. And then if you want to keep increasing, you would then revert back to increasing the one, then increasing the other, increasing the one, increasing the other. Or conversely, you could undo the round that we just did and leave off at three and three, you know, if you want a smaller size hat. You know, you can do options as far as that's concerned. However, for what we're doing, this is a, you know, run-of-the-mill adult-sized hat, you know. So that being said, we're going to keep on keeping on by chaining up two. And then we're going to do a back post in each of the next four back post double crochets. So get one. and two and three and four then we have our three front posts well we need to increase that first front post by doing two in the front first front post excuse me so we need two in that first one and then one in each for the next two for a total of four like so so now we've got four and four all right and then four back posts one two, three, and four, and then increase the first front post, one and two, in that first one, and then two more regular front posts for a total of four. There we go. And then untangle your yarn as needs be. <laughs> and then four back posts, one in each. One. Two. Three and Four, increase the first front post. So it's two around the first front post. And then one front post around each of the next two. Oop, oop, oop. I lost him. He's elusive, but I got him. All right, so keep on keeping on in the same fashion. Now, after this round is done, what we're gonna do is we are gonna switch off once again. Now, there's a trick, actually, as far as determining where you switch off, as far as going back and forth between the basket weave or checkerboard type pattern, whichever you wanna call it, really. But if you notice, we have, with 
it's easier to see actually with the back post ridges. See, we have one, two, three, We've got three ridges. And right now, with what we've already completed, as you can see, we have another three back post ridges. One, two, and three. So every time you reach three back post ridges, the next round is where you switch off to the alternative. So what we're going to do, for now anyway, is we're going to keep going around in the same way by doing four back posts and then increase that first front post and then do two regulars for a total of four all the way around until you reach the end where you will do four back posts and a total of four front posts, two in the first, and then slip stitch to the first, the top of the first back post. And then we will switch over and invert what we did once again. Okie dokie. Alrighty, round nine. In fact, round nine, 10, and 11 are all going to be done in the same way because we're not going to be doing any increases or anything like that. Nope, we are just going to do stitch for stitch all the way around. But again, we are going to be inverting because we have our three bars, which means we need to swap over. So chain up two and then into these four back post double crochets, we need four front post double crochets. So going around and one, two, three, and four. Okay. And then we need four back post double crochets around the front post double crochets. So going around the back. One, two, three, and four, then four front posts. One, two, three, and four, and then four back posts. One, two, three, and four. There we go. And so just keep doing this all the way around, alternating back and forth. Basically, you are, you know, you're inversing. You are reversing, inversing uh, what we did previously. So again, it's four front, four back, four front, four back, all the way around. Just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going until you reach the very beginning. And again, it would be four front in the backs and four back posts in the front posts. And then skip over this chain two and do a slip stitch into the top of that first front post double crochet. Okay. And then really what it amounts to is continuing on in the same sequence for the next two rounds. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the rest of this round as we've started it, and I'm going to show you what we're going to do next as far as round 10 and then round 11. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm almost done with round 9, but you know me, sometimes I like to uh, sort of recap with you guys. All right, so I just need to do my four front posts and my four back posts and do my join. So I'm going to do that right now. So four front posts, 
one, two, three, and four. Okay, then my four back posts. One, two, three, and four. Okay, then I have to do my join to the top of that first front post. And then for row 10, just to state what I was talking about before, it would be chaining up of two and then doing front posts in the front posts, back posts in the back posts, all the way around for this round and for the next round, just to clarify. So after doing my chaining up of two, it's four front posts. and then four back posts and then four front And then four back. And you would keep going on in this same fashion. Four front, four back, four front, four back, all the way around until you reached the beginning and you would need to do your slip stitch once again, of course. So going all the way around and around and around and around and around until you reach the very beginning, which is right here. It sort of blends in, so you gotta be careful. So it would be the four front and the four back, then joining with a slip stitch to that first front post double crochet. Then you would chain up two and then do four front, four back, four front, four back, all the way around. And then at that point, after doing round 11, you would swap over once again, okay? And I mean, it's it's just this back and forth process um, in order to create the basket weave pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish up round 10 and round 11, and then I will meet back up with you. All right, round 12, now, Again, to recap, we have our three ridges, as you can see. And so we're going to be swapping off once again. And we're going to be doing the same thing that we did for rounds 9, 10, and 11. We're going to be doing for rounds 12, 13, and 14. Okay. So what it amounts to, again, is we need to invert what we have established by chaining up two. And then we need to do back posts in the front posts and front posts in the back posts. And we're going to do that all the way around. So four back posts. So we got one and two and three. and four, and then four front posts, one, and two, and three, and four. 
All right. So, I mean, basically that's really the gist of it, you know. Um, I don't want to be overtly redundant, but yeah, basically for the rest of this round, you know, we did our back posts, front posts, then back, front, back, front, back, front, all the way around until you reach the beginning where we would do four back posts, four front posts, slip stitch to the first of our back posts, and then we would follow suit for the next two rounds, rounds 13 and 14, by doing back posts in the back posts and front posts into the front posts. And then, yes, and then we would need to do another series of blocks um, by, again, switching off once again. And so it would start with once, once you finish rounds 12, 13, and 14 for rounds 15, 16, and 17, what you would do is you would start after joining and you have your, your three ridges here, you would then join and then you would do the inverse, which would be again doing front posts in the back posts and back posts in the front posts. Now, I'm going to show you what I mean here. Now, if only I had sewn in my ends, which I'm, I'm guilty. All right, so to show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so as you can see, we have here, this was the last increase, bunch of blocks, and then we have a total of one, two, three, three sequences of blocks, one, two, and three, three sequences of blocks where there are no increases, just working the blocks, but inverting it back and forth between, uh, you know, doing the, the front posts and the back posts, alternating as you keep going. And then after you do that, I'm going to show you how to do the brim, which really is not difficult at all. But we need to get there first, which means basically alternating back and forth with our series of blocks. So as you can see here, this block right here is our last increase block. And we have one block, we're working on the second block, and then we need a series of that third section of blocks. Then we can do the brim, okay? Or of course, if you want it longer, if you want to do, say, a slouchy hat, hey, no problem. Do another sequence of blocks or another sequence of blocks on top of that. This is more for sort of a skull cap kind of, you know, kind of deal. Um, you know, a beanie, you know, whatever, your, whatever terminology you care for. Um, this one isn't going too far back as a slouchy would, although you could modify the pattern as I've said before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up doing the various rounds and uh, I will meet back up with you so that we can then do the brim. All right. So just keep going, as I said, alternating back and forth and uh, I'll meet back up with you. All righty. All right, so we are up to round 18. Yes, we are. And so we have here, let me just put my hook down there for a second. We have here. Okay, so this here is where we last increased this block. And then we have three blocks, one, two, and three. And now we are ready for the brim, okay? And of course, like I said, you can continue on if you so wish, but you know, for me and my head size purposes, uh, round 18, well, that's where we start the brim. All right. So at this point you switch over to your smaller sized hook for me, a size H five millimeter, and we are going to set things up for our brim. And it's actually really, 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 really simple. Round 18, especially, all you have to do is chain up one, 
and then into every stitch all the way around, just do a single crochet all the way around. It's really that easy. And then after this, we only have three more rounds, which of course you can do more if you so wish. If you want a wider brim, more power to you. But I'm only going to show you this round and three more rounds, and we will be done. Now, when you have single crocheted into all of your stitches, and this one was our first, don't confuse that chain stitch as a single crochet stitch. I can't stress that enough. And so you would do a stitch into here, 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 and here, okay? And then skipping over to the single crochet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way around and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean and that will finish up round 18. Alrighty, so to finish up round 18, I just have four more single crochets to go. One, two, three, and four. Now, like I said, you don't want to go into the, the chain. You want to go into the actual first single crochet that we did. Otherwise, you're going to end up increasing the number of stitches, and you don't want that. So you slip stitch into that single crochet, and that is the end of round 18. Alrighty. Round 19. Okay, so for round 19, we just need a round of double crochets. Now again, what I like to do personally is to chain up two, and then do my first double crochet into this stitch right here, like so. And this chaining up of two, again, does not count as an actual stitch. And just do double crochets into every single crochet all the way around. And the reason why I like to do the chaining up of two is because if you did a chaining up of three and have that act as your first double crochet, invariably it creates a bit of a gap. And quite frankly, I don't care much for the gap. So that being said, just do double crochets all the way around. And then when you have done your last single crochet, sorry, last double crochet into a single crochet, which would be right here, you would then do a slip stitch to the top of your first double crochet through there. Okay. All right. So then we will only have two more rounds and then we'll be done. All righty. All right, my dears, we're at the final stretch, if you will. So for rounds 20 and 21 and, well, however many rounds you want, me personally, I found that two rounds works nicely. So for the last two rounds, all you need to do is to chain up two and then, again, not into here because that's, that's the chaining up of the last round, into this bar, we're going to do a front post, double crochet, and then a back post, double crochet. And we're going to go back and forth and back and forth, doing front posts and back posts all the way around. Now, the reason why we're doing this is, well, it creates a nice ribbing, but also the reason why we're using a smaller size hook is because it will cinch it up just a little bit and shape it to your, your noggin just a little bit better. And I have found that this technique works well 
not just with crocheting, but with knitting hats as well. If you use a slightly smaller needle when doing the brim, really makes it shine. We're just going to go back and forth and back and forth and so on and so forth with front posts and, as I'm doing right now, a back post like so. And it creates a really nice finished look to your brim. And then once you have done your entire round and you do your last stitch around this bar, again, don't go into this bar because that's the chaining up around this bar, then you would slip stitch into the top of this first front post. Now, if your count is off by one and you end up having to do a, you know, a different stitch into here than you would like, it's the back of the hat. Do not stress, okay? You know, as some people would say, a person, you know, looking at it by you know, traveling by on horseback, they're not going to know the difference. And it is such a busy pattern, if you will, that uh, I don't think you'll really know the difference either. I, I, I miss it myself most of the time. So yeah, so you would, you know, continue along and you would slip stitch to the top of your first front post. And then you would chain up two and then do a front post in the front post, back post in the back post, front post in the front post, back post in the back post, and so on and so forth until your brim is the width that you want it to be. Yeah. So, my dears, that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, I love teaching you guys new things, and I hope that you like it. Indeed. And if you did, you know, I would appreciate your support with a little thumbs up down below. And, uh, you know, if you plan on making this, you know, of course, like I said, you can make alterations to the design. You can make your blocks bigger, smaller, you know, what have you. You know, if you want to do different sizes, um, as far as colors, I think an ombre would look awesome. Solids, I think, work best. Variegateds, well, it's hit or miss, you know, to be perfectly frank. But it's a lot of fun, and I hope you like it. So, that being said... Until next time, <laughs> I always get tongue-tied at the end, like, hmm, what do I say now? Until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and above all, stay safe. Yes, take care of yourself and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.